something that you kind of looked at and thought? You've never oh, seen that, have you? I actually have not seen. Fast <laughs> forward it through it because you know he's got a beard and he's got a sword on. Him. <laughs> and then when we put a beard on him for um, to play Freud, it was a different kind of beard. Than it was. It was real. Yeah, it was a real beard. Um, um, yeah, it's an instinctive thing, you know, because I hadn't. I, you had played dangerous characters. Before Carlito's way, you know, mm -hmm. just, and, and and so I knew that Vigo, you know, I could see that he could have menace. Um, I, I I thought he totally could not play a sympathetic person because he was completely not sympathetic. But um, <laughs> absent. <laughs> no, actually, in the meeting, it was really good because um, I could see different things just sitting across the table from him, things that I actually haven't seen in the movies, but I knew would be there on the screen. They talk with my mouth full. <laughs> <laughs> and the scar here. Um, so does an actor ever surprise you on set? I mean, all people, the time. people talk about this in crowd. All the time. They do. I expect it. I demand it. Uh, because uh, I don't... Um, some people think that, you know, if they said, did the movie turn out the way you wanted? And I, I realize that they think that you have the whole movie in your head, mm -hmm. and then you can now run the real movie side by side with it and see where it didn't match. Or it's nothing like that. It's very organic and it grows. And, and I think they think that people might think that about you. I mean, I, I had some notion that it might be that way before meeting you that uh, and working with you that you'd be very meticulous and everything would be planned out to oh, yeah. the nth degree, <clears throat> and you do plan everything really well, which is what I like to do also as an actor, you know, lots of research, and which is, I think, part of what's great, or maybe the main thing that's great about working together is that we share the research we do before and during the, the shoot, and, uh, but you look at your movies, and I don't know, I think that people maybe have an idea of your persona as being so meticulous that there is no... There are no accidents. It's all planned yeah. to the nth degree. And in reality, you plan, it seems to me, you plan everything. You, you try to think of it from every angle so that when you get to the set, you can throw it all away and just yeah. see what happens. And that's yeah. what I like to do. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, uh, I think people do think that my films are very controlled, you know, uh, and would probably imagine that I did storyboards and had everything. And I'm a totally anti-storyboard person. I don't, I never use them. Um, what I do is I, you, you prepare the field, you know, for, for play. You get the players, you get the field, but you don't know what's going to happen in the game. It's like that. Uh, hockey or baseball, uh, you know, these or, you know, whatever. And um, uh, you, so you don't, you don't know, uh, and, and, and that's, for me, that's just natural. Um, and I, I know uh, Fellini said, you know, why would I want to know exactly what the movie's going to be? I'd be so bored making it. And, uh, um, and Orson Welles, who is very much considered a control freak kind of director, said a director is someone who presides over a series of accidents. And I think it was Hitchcock, really, who, who is responsible for the presence of storyboarding mm -hmm. in school, all schools now. I, I talked to some students and they say they are totally taught to use storyboards. And storyboards are basically, it's like doing a comic book or a graphic novel of the movie with every shot set. Mm -hmm. But it's done before you've even cast it or got the locations or anything. So it's all very theoretical. Yeah, the problem with that is that when sometimes I found with other directors who do use them a lot, it, that they can limit themselves, you know, you, you arrive on the set and they say, no, 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 what I worked out, I mean, months ago, yeah. or before your cast, no, that you're going to be in the corner and you're in the chair and you have your left leg crossed over your, your right and then she's there and she, and, and I always say the same thing, which is probably why I don't work much anymore, <laughs> adding the notes is, uh, well, why don't you let us do it and then you can see what you like and what you don't like. So this is that, that, but, that, but, that, but you do limit yourself when you say it's got to be this way. We don't have time. We have to have these shots. It's that's part of it. The budgets and you know, they another, think they're going to save time, but what you end up you waste time because you end up doing lots of takes until the actors get comfortable with their forced 
blocking. Yeah. And instead of just letting them to some degree find, okay, what would you do here? Uh -huh. Okay, you watch. And yeah. you do it very quickly. You watch us do it once, and you say, okay, that's pretty good. Well, I'd alter this and that, and then you, based on that, that's the way you place the cameras, and you get on with the best work. Yeah. But other people force yeah. positions and behavior, even, yeah. um, and then you end up doing about ten takes before you even feel comfortable with something that's imposed on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, there's another aspect to that, which, which I, I don't know a lot about because it has to do with the way studios work, but now there's a thing called previs, which is basically you make an actual little movie using computer graphics of your movie beforehand um, with little figures and I remember s and, and part of it is because uh, a lot of people who are in control of studios and producers and stuff actually cannot imagine a movie from reading a script anymore that's so they, that's one of the reasons I've had directors say but that's not in the previous what you just did like in a, in a, in a run through yeah. I saw a previous for a, a, a section of uh, Total Recall and uh, I remember that the chairman of Sony uh, came out and said, I know the movie's going to be great because the previous is, wo the previous is wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, and in the, in the previous, the, the, the little robot character, who was the lead character, looked like um, Eric Bana, because at the time he was going to play the role. Mm -hmm. But Colin Farrell ended up doing it. <laughs> so in the previous, it's like Eric Bana. It's just very bizarre. And, and, and it's all about control and lack of imagination and fear, you know.